1978, the infamous year of the Great Tragedy. On November 18th, in what became known as the Jonestown Massacre, more than 900 members of an American cult called the People's Temple, including countless children, died in a mass suicide murder under the direction of their leader, Jim Jones, a charismatic manipulator who often compared himself to Vladimir Lenin and even Jesus Christ as his health declined due to paranoia and drugs over the years. The gruesome events took place at the so-called Jonestown Settlement in the South American nation of Guana. Jones had founded what became the People's Temple in Indiana around the year 1950, then relocated his congregation to California in the 60s. As a response following negative media attention, the powerful, controlling preacher moved with some 1,000 of his followers to the Guanese jungle in 1970, where he promised they would establish a utopian community. And perhaps he'd have succeeded had it not been for the investigation of U.S. Representative Leo Ryan, who had gone to Jonestown in order to uncover the cult's true colors in 1978. On the same day, the 18th of November, Ryan, along with four members of his delegation, was ambushed and murdered by Jonestown gunmen. This incident would soon initiate a horrible chain reaction of death. Convinced that even more outsiders were on the verge of intruding upon his territory, Jones informed his followers that soldiers would come for and torture them. He proceeded to order everyone to gather and commit what he termed a revolutionary act. The youngest members of the People's Temple were the first to die, as parents and nurses used syringes to draw up a potent mix of cyanide, sedatives, and powdered fruit juice into the children's throats. Adults then lined up one after the other to drink the poison-laced concoction while armed guards surrounded the town slowly but surely. When the Guanese officials arrived at the compound the next day, it was already too late. They found it carpeted with hundreds of bodies. Many people had perished with their arms around each other. And Jim Jones, age 47, was found in a chair, killed by a single bullet wound to the head, most likely self-inflicted. The death toll at Jonestown on November 18, 1978, was 909 people, a third of them children. A few people managed to escape into the jungle that day, while at least several dozen more People's Temple members, including several of Jones's sons, were in another part of Guana at the time. The Jonestown Massacre would go down in history as the single largest loss of U.S. civilian lives in a non-natural disaster prior to the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. Now, ladies and gentlemen, mellow greetings, good day and welcome. By the way, you might be wondering why the hell did I choose to tell you any of that, the infamous Jonestown massacre? Well, the reason happens to be an incredibly simple reason, as I was able to discover yesterday, apparently according to the developers, the Jonestown massacre 
served as one of the main inspirations for the story of Outlast 2. The team chose it as an inspiration for the game's design in order to capture that same feeling of horror, anxiety and hopelessness that players felt when they entered the asylum in the first game. And I have to say, that sure sounds amazing, both grim and amazing. Once again, they are using an event, something that happened in the real world in order to fabricate their own tale of darkness. In the first game, it was World War II, as well as the CIA's top secret MK Ultra project. And this time, it seems, it is going to be the Jonestown Massacre. Certainly daring, I have to say, daring. And by the way, I do have to credit YouTube user Daniel Anthony here at this point in time, because without his comment, I wouldn't have been able to understand Earth, these bits and pieces of information revealed by the developers anytime soon. Without you, this video right here wouldn't have been possible, therefore, thank you so very much, Mr. Anthony. Thank you a lot. It is also thanks to you that I am able to talk about the following, the plot. Yes indeed, the actual plot of Outlast 2. Perhaps you remember, perhaps you recall, if you watched my gameplay reaction video, I kept mentioning things from the first game, such as the Wall Rider, the variants, the former protagonist, Wayland Park from the DLC, the morphogenic engine, the evil Merc of Corporation, and so on and so forth. Well, as I've learned, the second game does in fact not take place right after the first. It is not a direct continuation of the story, though the developers have stated that it'll take place in the same universe as Outlast, after the events of the Mount Massive Asylum Slaughter, and that Murkoff is also scheduled to make their appearance. Well, at least we have that. But what is the new story going to be? Well, I am just going to quote the Outlast Vicky here. <clears throat> you are Blake Langerman, a cameraman working with your wife Lynn. The two of you are investigative journalists, willing to take risks and dig deep to uncover the stories no one else will dare touch. Oh dear, once again a journalist, eh? Those just seem to be cursed, I have to say, always finding themselves in grim, grim situations. You are following the trail of clues that started with the seemingly impossible murder of the pregnant woman known only as Jane Doe. The investigation has led you miles into the Arizona desert to a secluded village, a darkness so deep that no one else could shed light upon it, and a corruption so profound that going mad may be the only sane thing to do. The woman was previously found eight months pregnant by the side of the road before committing suicide in the hospital that she was brought to, according to the family records. Due to the desert climate and the region being inaccessible by land vehicles, the two take a chopper to reach their destination, which ends up crashing from unknown complications. Of course, stranded in the middle of nowhere so perfect. Blake wakes up some time after with Lynn nowhere in sight. Later, Blake realizes that he has been stranded in a village with cult members that believe the end of times are upon them. His main goal is to find Lynn and escape alive from the hostile villagers. And now I am feeling intrigued, so very intrigued, because there might be the chance that the two games are going to connect. I mean, why else would the developers have stated that the game takes place in the same universe as Outlast 1, after the events of Mount Mass of Asylum? I mean, they already used real life events, Outlast 1, the CIA and everything to fabricate their own story. Maybe they are going to connect this new story based on the Jones 
Last Town Massacre to fabricate something else connected to the first Outlast as well. Maybe the War Rider is going to show up to drive the people insane. Maybe it is the god the people now worship. Who knows? I have to wonder, is that evil, evil preacher going to show up as well? Good old Jones, yes indeed. Maybe Jim Jones is now worshipping the Wall Rider. Or maybe, maybe the evil Murgoff Corporation is going to abuse the village for their own experiments. Who knows, there are still so many possibilities, so many questions left unanswered, but I am certainly feeling excited. Stuck in the middle of nowhere, as Blake Langerman, another brave journalist, desperately trying to make his way through the living hell that happens to be a secluded village in the middle of Arizona. I am looking forward to it, ladies and gentlemen, and I do hope that you are looking forward to it as well. Last but not least, at PAX East, the developers have also stated that a comic book is coming, it is in the works, that will bridge the gap between Outlast 2 and the original game. Usually I am not the biggest fan of books and comics that try to bridge a gap between games, uh, but this is Outlast we are talking about, and I mean, the game, it was short enough to begin with, why the hell not? have like a comic book to bridge a gap sure why the hell not i am gonna read it now that as i believe it ladies and gentlemen all the bits and pieces i was able to stumble upon now there is still more to the gameplay more that i have shown but unfortunately those bits and pieces i were not able to show they happen to be bits and pieces of the actual pax east demo and i don't have that demo unfortunately i wasn't there therefore what i have shown you must do for the time being I hope that I got you hyped even more, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, thank you, Daniel Anthony, for your comment, and I shall see you all again very, very soon. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, until then, have a good one. My name has been The Shadow Cookie, and Outlast 2 is coming soon. It'll be upon us.